quick video today for Hermit Crab Academy discussing foraging for your hermit crabs. Now I'm outside today and it's like 39 degrees so it's super chilly and if um, it sounds like I'm freezing it's because I am. Uh, the first thing that I want to recommend that you do is go to our website and print out our foraging list. This is a list of everything that you can safely gather outside for your hermit crabs to eat. This is not an extensive list of every single thing that's safe or unsafe. Um, we have that list on the website also, but this is just meant to take out with you. And you need to find a place where you have permission to forage. It's legal for you to pick up leaves and bark and moss and things like that. And um, that you're not going to get in trouble violating the laws. And then it has to be a place that hasn't been sprayed for bugs or with any other kind of pesticides or anything. The other thing that I recommend that you get, unless you're a walking encyclopedia of um, different trees and leaves, is some sort of field guide. I picked this one because it covers almost everything um, you would want. It doesn't have like, because I'm in the Midwest, I don't have access to the beach and stuff, but it's got trees, plants, moss, everything you could think of and will help you identify it. So you'll want a good field guide and you'll want your foraging guide. Some of the most common things you'll want to collect will be leaves. And leaves from the fall um, are high in tannin, so getting dropped leaves is great. Most leaves from um, non-ornamental trees, non-fruit bearing trees, and um, non-evergreen trees are safe. So your maple, your oak, your elm, your sycamore, leaves like that are all safe for your hermit crabs. at an art center but it was a good place for me to walk and not get muddy and show you some of the stuff that you could collect and you can see out here there's tons of down trees there's loose bark on a lot of these trees so if um, it's a safe tree like we can see this one back up here you could maybe find some bark and get some nice bark for your tank tons of leaves acorns you might find flowers this time of year obviously there's no flowers it's too cold I don't have a lot of moss around here either so I can't show you a lot of the moss I would really suggest that you follow Jeannie Singhas who is one of our local reps um, on Facebook and on YouTube she has started doing foraging videos also and she's like our queen of the moss she knows her moss and lichens and she could point you towards what's safe and what's unsafe. So this tree here, I feel like this one may be a cedar tree. There's a lot of tr cedar trees where I'm at, and it's called cedar hearse because of that. So um, I don't recognize this bark. So I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, pull this bark. That's why it's important to know your tree types and have your guide so you can compare. There's also a lot of apps that you can use on your phone to help you identify mushrooms which are high in chitin really good for the hermit crabs but you got to get the safe mushrooms especially um, because some of them are really toxic and some are even lethal so um, uh, you'll want to have your book to check and make sure that you know you're getting safe mushrooms, safe bark, safe lichens, things like that. But uh, mushrooms are really high in chitin and that's good for the crab's exoskeleton. So if you have access to safe wild mushrooms, those are a good option. I'm trying to think what else. If you're by the seashore, there's stuff you can collect along the seashore also, but again, I don't have access to that. Um, so I can't, I can't tell you about that. You do have to make sure that if you're collecting any kind of um, shellfish that you boil it 
or steam it before serving. The rest of the stuff that you forage, you basically want to take it home, clean it really well, and then either bake it, microwave it, which is what zoos do, so we usually recommend that you microwave to help kill some of the stuff that may be on, some of the bugs and stuff that might be on the leaves and bark. This time of year, obviously the bugs are going to be primarily dormant. There may still be larvae and eggs inside of the bark and whatnot. So it still doesn't hurt to do a good job cleaning it. Wash off your leaves if they have a lot of bird poop on them. Stuff like that. Um, and then just toss them in the tank, you know, make a I like to make what I call my litter basket instead of a litter box. I make a litter basket and I put all my bark and my leaves and my acorns and my dried flowers, all of that in just one big basket and um, usually some sphagnum moss, which is their favorite. And uh, they just kind of burrow down in there and eat and sleep and, and hang out in that litter basket. So good addition to your tank. Mm. Okay, I think my hands are frozen. I think I covered most of the stuff that you would want to know. Um, well, well, chipmunk. You guys probably can't see him. So uh, definitely visit our website for the foraging guide and the safe and unsafe foods list so that we can get you on the right track, get you a good field guide, and then start thinking about places when uh, spring gets here that you can go out, do some foraging, and get some natural plant matter and mushrooms and fungi and all kinds of good stuff for your hermit crabs. Some of the stuff, of course, I do sell in our store. I keep leaves all year round. I keep um, an oak leaf mix all year round. And I have bark right now. Soon I'll have, I'm hoping this weekend, which if you're watching this months from now, this will be irrelevant. But um, I should have deer poop soon. Herbivore poop from like deer, elk, antelope. Uh, can be collected and fed to your crabs. They really like it because the nutrients from the plants have already been partially digested. So the crabs are able to extract the nutrients that they need even quicker. So they actually kind of like poop. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so I uh, hope to do some more videos in the coming weeks. Hope you'll follow and subscribe and uh, check out our website. Join us on Facebook too. Thanks guys.